Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, board certified family practice, and today we're going to talk about vertigo. So vertigo is a sensation of being off balance or dizzy or disequilibrium or feeling like you're moving when you're not actually moving. Your sense of balance comes from your inner ears. So your inner ears do two things. They're responsible for hearing and they're also responsible for balance. You have three what are called semicircular canals that they look almost like three loops on a roller coaster. And these are what translate movement into electrical impulses and tell your brain where you're moving. So if you think of these little semicircular canals or um, circles as hula hoops and if you spin a hula hoop quickly you can hear the beads or the liquid inside the hula hoop swishing around and this is what your body actually does when you turn your head a certain direction one of the hula hoops the liquid inside of it spins the liquid swooshes and it actually moves these little hair cells inside of the semicircular canal and that translates into movement so these three hula hoops are perpendicular to each other and depending on which hula hoop is moving the most it translates into movement. So with your eyes closed, you know where you're moving in space. When you have vertigo, your ears are actually goofed up. So your ears are telling your brain you're moving when you're not actually moving. So if you've ever had vertigo, you usually turn a certain direction and the vertigo starts and you feel like you're spinning or you're moving. And what that actually is, is that your ears shouting to your brain, I'm moving, I'm moving, when you're actually not moving and your brain's caught off guard, you think you are moving or off balance, and then if you wait a few seconds, the vertigo usually goes away because your eyes look around and your eyeballs tell your brain, I'm not moving. Your, your brain asks your neck muscles and your neck muscle says, we're not moving. So your brain actually looks at all the information it's getting and it realizes that the ear is giving an erroneous signal and then it disregards or ignores the ear and the vertigo goes away. The problem is, is a short while later, you move again and your ear starts shouting, we're moving, we're moving, and your brain's caught off guard again. It forgot, it thinks you're moving or it gives you a sensation of movement and you go through that whole process again and then you ignore the ear and the vertigo goes away. We don't really know what causes vertigo. There's a couple of hypotheses and one of them is, is that um, you get these little stones or little bits of sand inside of these semicircular canals and when the liquid swishes around inside of the canal these little stones are like the beads in the hula hoop they actually bang against these hair cells and they trigger the hair cells to fire more aggressively or louder than they would if it was just the liquid swirling around and this gives a extra signal to your brain that you're moving and there's a procedure called the Eppley maneuver where we move your head through certain uh, maneuvers to try and flush this uh, stone out out of your ears and this may be a cause of vertigo. Uh, my personal suspicion is is that at least some vertigo is weather related or barometric pressure related. Uh, I tend to see a lot of vertigo in the springtime. Uh, the last two or three years we've had a lot of storm fronts in the Midwest and you get these one barometric pressure change storm front after the other and I'll see 20 or 30 people in a two month time period with vertigo. It seems more so that women get vertigo than men, at least with this uh, type of seasonal vertigo. Um, we thought at one point that it was an infection, but uh, it doesn't seem to be transmitted from one family member to another, so infection's not likely. Uh, when we have vertigo, we break it up into three different types of vertigo. There's what's called benign positional vertigo. So benign meaning it's not a tumor or cancer. Uh, positional meaning change of head position triggers it, and then vertigo. Uh, much, much more rare is something called an acoustic neuroma. And this is a tumor you get at the base of the uh, brainstem, and this will actually trigger vertigo uh, attacks. It's not very common. It's easily uh, diagnosed with an MRI if you have pers persistent vertigo. And the last is something called Meniere's disease, and this is a triad of vertigo, a tinnitus, or ringing in the ears, and unilateral one-sided uh, nerve damage hearing loss. It tends to be familial, so other family members uh, likely have had it. Um, so if you have a chronic vertigo issue, uh, the doctor's going to ask you if you have ringing in the ears to determine if you have Meniere's disease. Uh, they may send you for a hearing test to see if you have a hearing loss on just one side as compared to the other and then they'll diagnose you as Meniere's disease. 
Uh, chronic vertigo can be pretty tough to treat. There's not a lot of good treatments. There's a medication called meclizine, which is actually the same medicine that is an over-the-counter Dramamine less drowsy. And what meclizine does is it, it suppresses the signal. So your ear is still shouting, I'm moving, I'm moving, but it becomes less of a signal and your brain tends to ignore it a little bit easier. Uh, meclizine absolutely does not cure vertigo and there's some evidence that says that it may actually prolong your vertigo because your brain tends to learn from the episodes and the more we muffle that the longer we may drag it on so uh, meclizine for severe vertigo I would not use it uh, for a chronic basis uh, there's a medicine called aldactone um, or spironolactone and this is a specific type of a diuretic medication that can help with vertigo as well and you have to be careful and watch your potassium on this medication. Um, if you don't have high blood pressure, it can drop your blood pressure a little bit, but it can be fairly successful to treat chronic vertigo. Uh, and lastly, I accidentally discovered that testosterone therapy uh, in older people, say 50 and over, uh, has been very successful in treating vertigo. So if you're 20 years old and have acute vertigo, probably not the answer, but if you're older and have chronic vertigo, uh, testosterone therapy may uh, help improve it. I don't know why. I've not seen that in the literature, but I've had half a dozen patients I've treated successfully for chronic vertigo uh, using this uh, testosterone therapy. Your doctor uh, can do a very simple test in the office called the Hall Pike Maneuver. And what they do is they tip you back, turn your head to the side, and see if it elicits vertigo. Uh, we want to have two things happen uh, with the vertigo to tell us that it's the benign type of vertigo. Uh, it should be extinguishable and fatigable. So when we lay you down and we tip your head to the side, um, if we lay you there for a few seconds, it should go away. Um, it fatigues, so it doesn't stay persistent. And if you lay down for a minute and your vertigo doesn't go away, uh, that may be a bad sign. Uh, the next thing the doctor will do is he'll tip your head back a second and a third time, and it should go away. So the second time it's just a teeny bit of vertigo, and the third time you lay back it's gone. So it is extinguishable. So fatigable and extinguishable are the two things we're looking for to confirm that your vertigo is benign. Um, if it doesn't do that, then you may need to get an MRI test uh, of your brain to make sure you don't have this rare condition called acoustic neuroma. So vertigo can be very mild, it can be very severe severe, and require hospitalization and bed rest. It can last a few moments to weeks, it can be one time only, it can be recurrent. So lots of variations to vertigo, uh, not a lot of effective, effective therapy for vertigo, but some medicine that's helpful. Uh, one thing you can do is physical therapy. They actually have therapy that you can do for vertigo. You can do some of this at home. So what you do is you lay on the edge of the bed and you lay a roll a quarter of a turn. You get your vertigo to happen and you stay in that position. You don't move. It's The tendency would be to move to make the vertigo go away, but you want to stay in that position and let the brain figure it out. Uh, you roll another quarter of a turn and you, like we said, fatigable and extinguishable. Uh, the vertigo should be less each time you you roll and you should be able to get to the other side of the bed and the vertigo is gone. The problem is is that a few hours later your brain is forgotten and you have the vertigo again. So you want to do these exercises uh, several times a day till the vertigo passes. So benign positional vertigo, the most common type of vertigo. Acoustic neuroma, probably the rarest type of vertigo. And this other thing called Meniere's disease, which is the triad of vertigo. Sensory neuro hearing loss or one-sided ear damage hearing loss and a tinnitus or tinnitus or ringing in the ears uh, to be Meniere's disease. Uh, treatments, meclizine, symptomatic only, does not get you better any quicker. Um, antivert, or, or excuse me, scopolamine, excuse me again, um, uh, aldactone or spironolactone, the medication diuretic uh, can be helpful and can be used long term and definitely off-label, but testosterone may be helpful if you're older. Uh, Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.